Santana, Lord's about to spawn. You're watching rockinlive.org. On the road in the studio. Most of the songs we could have had. It takes, yeah, sorry. It's, sometimes it takes a couple years, you know? Like some songs are good, some are no, not so good. But at least one or two of the songs we have been already playing for a long time. So, Los Angeles or a little bit on the road. We have a studio, very unique studio, a small studio. Kiss Destroyer. Okay. How about you guys? <laughs> Mine was Kiss Double Platinum. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, I had like really, I actually have really embarrassing stories about buying albums because I was like 13 years old and super into like Ted Nugent and Led Zeppelin and, and just, you know, anything that like older people were, were kind of turning me on to. And I take my mom to this cool record store called uh, Underdog Records. They're like the cool guys hung out there. My mom would walk in and go, my son needs some Fred Nugent and Ed Zeppelin. And these guys would make fun of me. I'm like 13 years old, like turning bright red. And I'm like, I'm the lamest loser in the world. My mom is buying me Ed Zeppelin albums. And they're like, hey, I don't know if we have any Ed Zeppelin. We got Pete Zeppelin or Tommy Zeppelin. And you're just fucking with them, so. No, but I have to tell you something funny. It's very similar. There was a record store called Yuri's Records in my town. And we, I live kind of in the ghetto of my town. That's such a good area. But I would like ride my bicycle all the way down to this place. And the first time I ever saw like punk rock records, I had no fucking idea what this is. But I remember uh, the cramps smell of female. And it had Poison Ivy with the, the cat ears doing this thing. And I would walk by the record like 10 times because I was scared to pick it up because I was like, oh my god, it's like Poro. You know, she's bending over it. I'm like, oh, this is fucking hot. <laughs> Yeah. 